All right, gang, it's Cobb. I'm coming at you here with a VOD review on Skarma and what was quite a difficult game that I think I performed quite well in. If you have any interest in playing Skarma as a jungler, this will help you immensely learn what it is that you need to be doing. Uh, Skarma is a champion I've been using to carry myself out of my current rank. Um, currently, I am ranked 159 on Skarma in the EU West. 70% uh, win rate recently. And as you can see here, my stats on Skarma are pretty good. So listen in here, guys, and I will show you exactly what it is you need to be doing to carry your games at any elo. Uh, this can be applicable at even higher than plat elo, which we're at just now. This is high plat. Um, firstly, before we get into the actual game, I'll tell you exactly... Skarma, shut up, mate. Stop dancing. Um, I'll show you exactly what it is I was thinking when I was in the champion select of this game. I had last pick in this champ select. Uh, I'll go through this as quickly as I can, as I say. But I had last pick in this champ select, so I could have picked any champion I wanted to try and carry this game. Um, I could have picked Hecarim, I could have picked Graves, I could have picked any tryhard jungler I wanted, but no, I picked Skarn. This is a perfect Skarner game. Uh, we have zero front line on our team. We've got a fantastic back line, some good pick potential, and a healer enchanter support. The enemy team has got two squishy uh, engage based champions, they're squishy, they're melee, they have to get in to deal a lot of damage while they're attacking, they're healing up, but if they're not attacking, these champions die very quickly, guys. Um, between Diana, who's exactly like that, and Adelia in the top lane, if these guys get CC'd out of fight, guys, they die, and if they're not in a fight, they're doing nothing, okay? Skarner's fantastic at locking down champions like that. Samira, Yon, Diana, Aurelia, fantastic time to pick Skarner, okay? The same way even like Yasuo, uh, quite popular champions that Skarner just shuts down, right? So in the early game here, Lee Sin is an early game jungler. Skarner, we play for the mid game. He's going to dominate us early. Shouldn't be able to kill us, but what I do here is, you can see I put down a, a ward, uh, recall, and I swap to sweeper. Um, by doing that, I can use the sweeper to remove wards when I'm ganking, but the main thing I do it for is because we have this ward here. So if Lee Sin wants, Lee Sin wants to start red buff, right? Because he's a he's a machete-based jungler. Uh, lower AoE damage, high single target. So he's going to start red. He's likely going to look at my blue if he knows what he's doing. I put down this, mitigates that entirely. I can start my red, see what he positions to do, and then uh, make my move from there. So on Skarner, our clear's fantastic, right? Brilliant, very fast, very healthy clear. Um... He's got that in common with champions like Graves. So I greed here. I go for the, the Krugs. I was thinking about potentially running straight down to my to my blue. But Lee Sin here, he goes for a gank on bottom lane. So I, that tells me I've got a bit of time to play with. Unfortunately, he picks up the kill on the Ash. Um, the Ash trades one for one um, on the Pike. So it's not the worst trade for us, especially because we're looking for the mid game. But um, that tells me I can greed for Krugs. Now, it's fantastic to get, to get an early Krugs, guys. If you get an early Krugs stack, that dies. That comes back level 2. The experience in gold's brilliant. And um, I, was, I was worried that Lee Sin was going to invade me here at blue. He doesn't. We've got a ward down. We know he doesn't do that. So he's going to go mid or clear the rest of his bot side. He's probably looking to go straight to his blue. Um, so we can greed again. Go for the chickens and look maybe for a full clear here. I see Diana is pushing up very heavily mid, guys. Now... On Skarner, you don't want to be looking for these early ganks, right? But if they are free, this is free. We've seen Lee Sin's going to his blue buff. We know he's not going to be sitting in a bush ready to gank this. Lee Sin can't gank this. It's ungankable for him. Diana's heavily pushed. This is a free gank, guys. So we go for it. It takes us about 20 seconds off our clear. Let's see what happens. Right, we're walking up to Diana. We wait as late as we can before we E. If that stun happens, she gets Ari charmed, she's dead. So she has to flash. We walk right up, we're faster than her with her W. We know this, so we can wait as late as we can. You don't have to pot shot the E, guys. Wait till as late as you can to use that E. Make sure it hits, because if it hits, it's a free kill. It's touch of death, okay? So, we're going back down here. I want to do my blue side, but these guys have just killed Ash again. The bot lane running it down here. So, what do we do? We come and prioritise killing these two. They're very low. Uh, Skarner early game terrible. I flash the Phantom Drift or whatever the hell that move's called. Uh, get the E on him. I know I can one shot once the E lands. She's slowed. Bada boom, bada bing. That's a double kill. Now, the only reason I got that, guys, was for map awareness. Um, the bot lane here looks like their bot lane's out skilling us. But if you know that your bot lane's falling behind in fights and the other bot lane's looking to play the game fast and scrappy, go for these kills, guys. Because while I'm telling you Skarner's a, a mid game champ, 
that you're playing for that mid game. These kills snowball you, they get you ahead, they give you XP, they give you gold. Uh, Lee Sin is up here trying to do bits on the top side of the map, trying to get a kill on Akali. Uh, Lee Sin pays for his efforts, but it looks like Akali is going to go down, trades one for one. It's not the worst, but um, Akali doesn't even die here, wow. But um, yeah, so Lee Sin ints a little bit there. You should be using his early game aggression to try and fight me. Um, he likely can't kill me because I can just E him, phase rush, and run away. But. Um, yeah, he likely can't kill me, but he should be using his early game aggression to try and set me back, set back my level 6 power spike. But he's trying to manipulate other areas of the map. Um, so, I'm down bottom here. I'm not really looking for a gank. We don't know where Lee Sin is. I'm thinking he's likely bought again because he's reset um, off his first clear. He started bot side, so that's where his caps will be. We take the buy here. We get some decent items in. I go Skirmisher Sabre this game because there's a lot of melee champs. Uh, quick rule of thumb for you guys. Skirmisher Sabre in matchups where you're going to be doing a lot of fighting with melee champions. Uh, you're not looking to run, dash, catch somebody you're looking to fight people who are in melee range guys okay because it ha it does takes away a lot of their damage and ignites them uh, it's like a mini ignite a mini exhaust so you win a lot of trades and it can make you very very tanky in this mid game guys so we're not doing anything fancy here. we're going for a full clear uh you'd be worried lee sin would be going for drake here right now but we've got good vision control around it um we've seen him on the map we know he's not going there so i go for the greedy clear hoping to hit level six off of this i'm not sure if i do or not it's going to be close if i do and um, we see bot lane running it down again uh, ash has been sent back to base for what the third time yeah third time this game but we're happy with that guys we go down we soak some xp all of this would be going to waste otherwise so you need to be looking for opportunities if your lanes are running it down uh, sending people back to base that's like 10 cs we just picked up there and we did it in an instant compared to how quick we'd be looking at our jungle um ari gets a very good pick onto diana here the ari was another saving grace in this game because all the other lanes don't particularly pull their weight um i'm going to start drake here but I'm worried that the bot might rotate up and Lee Sin comes up. Uh, we lose that 100%, guys. Lee Sin uh, more ahead of us right now. Uh, but Annie comes back down so we can secure this. The bot lane are back in here. Lee Sin has no chance to contest this because I pull it out. I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I've, I've lost too many drakes in the past to Lee Sin. Queuing a wall or Wing a wall, stealing it with smite. So you pull that out anytime you're fighting a Lee Sin. Anybody who's going to try and smite steal from you. Um, we're just clearing here guys, nothing fancy, Herald's up, so we want to play on the top side of the map, we've got our ult now, so we're looking, we're thinking, anytime you get your ult, right, you need to be thinking to yourself, you need to be thinking to yourself, how can I use this to uh, the best that we can, uh, so I'm thinking, this should be burning a hole in your pocket when this is up, um, unless there's something massive to contest, this should be burning a hole in your pocket, right? You should be thinking how to use it. I'm seeing a Diana neutral mid. Uh, Ari Charm, my ult, my E. If we land one bit of CC on this Diana, she is 100% dead. Um, now, I actually make a misplay here, guys. Lee Sin, I see Lee Sin here, and I think to myself, well, you know what? If we get on Diana first, it's GG, it doesn't matter. Lee Sin lands what must be like a full range Q. I thought from where Lee Sin's standing here, I think there's no chance of him landing his Q. Um... He lands it on me, he gets on, he, do, he has his W up, I get kicked back away from Annie, and unfortunately, I've, I've skirmish shabled the Diana, Diana lives on a, a smidgen of health there, and we don't get the kill, I die, uh, so that's quite a big misplay there guys, respect the 2v2s is Skarner, we always, always, always look for opportunities where we can 2v1, right, because if, if, you if you're in a 2v1 situation, you're like a Malzahar, right, if you're in a 2v1, uh, you literally suppress them, and the other person just wails on them. They're dead before they can say anything. It's a touch of death scenario on Skarner, okay? If you if you hit one ability, they go down in a 2v1 every single time. Um, so that was a bit stupid. I knew that could have turned into a 2v2. We don't take those. We like those 2v1s. Okay, so we see Lee Sin top side. We've got it all warded up. We know for a fact this man's not starting it. He's taking back the platform. I'm saying, mate, don't waste your time taking this platform. I'm just going to go do chickens. Um, we see Lee Sin here. He's coming down to do the blue buff. We don't know this at this time. So I'm just going to go back up and do this. We can see Aurelia's pushing top side. Um, unlikely that she's going to be pulling away from this. So I say, hey, Akali, I ping it. I pick literally right. So this may be a misplay. It may not be. But to go for Krogs here. I see Akali, I'm coming top, right? 
just to be efficient in case I die or whatever, what happens, anything crazy, I do Krogs and then I see him coming top. Akali, Akali gets traded on here, loses all our health, right? That's made our gank null and void pretty much. I cannot 1v1 this Aurelia. Uh, potentially she tries to dive Akali or something really stupid, we kill her here, but there's no way. Um, Akali walks up, I'm pinging Akali back, I'm pinging Akali back, I'm saying to her, listen, I'll just hold your wave here, reset, you get a free reset, the team keeps the gold. Akali greeds like fuck here because she thinks she's safe because she's got the big man kicking her down. Uh, she goes up for three casters and pays the price with her life. If we play this back, it's very awkward timing, right? Very, very awkward timing. Uh, I'm convinced here that I can ult the Lee Sin. While, he, while he's here, right, I'm convinced I can ult him and pull him under tower. If he dies, we go one for one. We're quite happy with that. But you can see uh, earlier on, if I slow it down for you, Skarner makes the sound effect that he's ulting, he started the channel, we don't finish the channel by what must be milliseconds um, and Lee Sin picks up here, look, listen, look, started it, Cinderhulk procs, Cinderhulk procs because I've suppressed him, but somehow this doesn't work, so that's sad, Lee Sin kicks me, very awkward timing, I'm off the tower, um, and then this looks bad guys, I'm 2v1 now, I've just blown my ult, not great at all, I, I want to hold this for... Akali, obviously, try and get some gold in. But it's difficult. Uh, people should not be diving Skarner. But they go for it anyway. Let's run it back there in a little bit slower for you to show exactly what happened. So with Skarner's E, people, it's very difficult to dive him, right? If you get suppressed for 1.25 seconds when you're when you're diving, that's a, a run ender, okay? I'm quite tanky. I'm half HP. She misses the stun on me. She decides to go for it anyway. I've landed the stun on her. She's getting burned by a tower. Lee Sin on me. I flash out the way of them. They're two melees. They've got no dashes to get back to me. They've blown everything. I'm on a chunk of HP. They're dying. Lee Sin, his skirmisher sabred me. He dies to tower here because uh, of the skirmisher saber blow. I know for a fact that really I can't dive me now. Uh, she can't one-shot me. I can eat or attack her. So I get the hell out of here. She takes her pink. We've got a fantastic buy in base now, guys. Very chunky. Look, we go back. We pick up the rest of the Cinder Hulk. And we get a Sheen as well for our troubles. So this is good, guys. Now we're in a good position to carry the game. We're 2-1. Our top lane's running it down. Uh, more deaths than kills. Uh, down 30 CS. Bot lane not looking too great either. Down in CS. 1-4. and four. Uh, Ari's doing well, so it's, it's up to me and Ari to try and get some picks here and carry this game, guys. So how do we do that? We've already got one Drake. We can start looking at trying to stack some Drakes here. D next Drake's going to be up soon. You need to be prioritising these things, because um, these are the things that are going to win the game. A kill doesn't win the game. A lot of people try to get kills, um, and obviously you get gold, you get a bit of time on the map, but without a win condition, you're going to just end games, guys. You need something to try and close the game out. So we're down in gold here. We see Diana comes in on us. We literally just hit the dash and run out. Now, I'll run that back for you because this is something that makes Skarner very difficult to kill. Diana can absolutely 1v1 us here, but what happens here? Uh, our bot lane's fighting their bot lane. We don't want the, the, the sauce. Diana comes in. We hit the dash on her. EQ, just walk away. She doesn't want to engage on us. She can't afford to. Uh, I can't 1v1 her even with ult, but we see what happens here. Annie's pinging it, Annie's pinging it, I don't want any of the sauce, our bot lane stinks, she gets a fantastic charm on the bot, Ash takes a absolute blinded and arrow, uh, we know we can fight this now, she's chunked, we can kill this Diana, mop her up, we go back in, now this is, watch carefully how I do this here guys, I'm body blocking for this Ash here, I know I can ult her, take her out of the fight, we miss the E, we just still pull her out of the way, easy, so, too much CC for them to handle, uh, Pike gets the kill on Soraka. I know he's got the. I know for a fact he's got the um, the reset on his ult. We know he's got the reset on the ult here, so look what happens. He goes in, I'm about three quarters HP. Lee Sin's trying to 2v1 me here. The Ash is too low to get in the fight. Lee Sin gets bodied in this fight. He gets. There's 2v1 two, there's pretty much here, and Lee Sin loses. I escape on nothing. Now, I was very scared of the Pike using his ult to execute me here. Very, very scared of that. So look what happens here. Pike goes and blows his ult. He blows it on the ass. Huge misplay from them. We killed the Lee Sin anyway, um, and we get out of here. There's no way he can step up for this. He's got no cooldowns. He's out. Okay, so we speed this game up now. We're in a great position to carry the game. Five and one. We just picked up like three kills from that fight. Take this Drake, and it's looking a bit pear-shaped for them. Oh, this is good as well, this is good as well, right? So, 
Skarner is fantastic into assassins because people do stupid shit like this, right? You see Skarner, he's on like 400 HP. You think you can assassinate him? No. Pick Skarner into assassins, guys. It's so free, honestly. Diana, I'm on 400 HP. A Diana would blow me up. No, this happens though. I use the boost to so that she can't jump to me. She's got no vision on me. And she just gets blown up, melted by the rest of the team. Uh, assassins can't pick champions when Skarner's on the team. If this Ash, for example, was to get a, a Diana's trying to assassinate as Diana, the easiest thing in the world, guys, to click out on her and laugh. Laugh your ass off all the way to the bank. So, guys, we are still behind in gold here. We need to think of a win con to try and win this game. I'm Skarner. I want to get these picks. She's overextended, like Aurelia players do. They're always very aggressive, hyper-aggressive, trying to get these uh, leads. But it's up to me to try and get these picks on side lane, people, now. I'm, I can 1v1 champions. Um, we need to be playing to get picks here. So we get that pick on Aurelia, it's nice. Uh, we don't know Lee Sin's doing the Herald, he's, he's actually going for it. We've got vision here, so I don't know if I just missed him on the map. The, we shouldn't have sacked that there. Um, we had advantage as well, our top was up there, top was down. So, bit of a misplay there from us, but it's not going to be game ending. Uh, it's past 14 minutes, so Lee Sin's not going to get plate gold from that Herald. Would have been nice for us though. Right, see what happens here guys. I try to go up to Senna, she just walks away. And uh, it's important to know when to stop, okay? So you're chasing someone down. You're going to catch them eventually, right, on Skarner because he's, he's faster than a lot of champions. I land the E. I'm chasing, I'm chasing, I'm chasing her. She just gets a wee bit too close to the rest of the team. Instead of running it down and running at her, uh, we sack it there, guys. We just leave it. Right, so there's a, a little fight burst out top lane here. I don't want any of it because Akali's a little bit too behind. Um, we're just going to go back to farming here. There's no rush to do anything important on the map. And he gets a big shutdown there on the pike. It's fantastic. Um, we can look to that set dominance here uh, in the vision, the topside river. Uh, we're thinking about that next Drake coming up, guys. And Aurelia, again, being aggressive, she pushes up. And she's going to pay the price for her life. Uh, she ults me here. I somehow miss E at point blank range. Have a word with yourself, Cobb. Uh, <laughs> she just she gets out here. Uh, stupid play from me, missing that E. It's like I'm literally on top of her and I somehow miss it. I'd love to run that one back. Show the replay, guys. Show the replay. Um, nah, I'm not going to be showing the replay on that one. Um, so we're looking to reset here. Ari can hold her own mid, just getting chunked down a bit. I'm, Akali's desperate to do something here. Even when this scenario happened earlier on, Lee Sin bodied her 100 to 0 between her and the Aurelia. I'm telling her, do not fucking bother with that, man. Um, let's just play for Drake. That's what I keep saying in the chat this game. I keep saying, let's play for Drake. Because um, we've got two here, but we've got a win con established is Soul. Uh, Soul wins games, guys. Individual Drakes don't particularly. For good little things, little cherries on the top of the cake, icing on the cake, whatever you say. But uh, four Drakes is a game winning thing, guys. So we've, we've got two here. We want to contest every single Drake now and push that to a win. There's these little fights going down mid lane. Nothing particularly happening. Like I say, the odd kill does not lead to you winning the game, guys. It's these objectives, it's these towers, things like that, that are going to actually uh, lead you to a, a, a victory. So um, I'm just pushing bot and being like uh, another laner here. Lee Sin's putting down Herald for some reason. This is just a fiesta, right? He, he uses this on a tower that's basically dead, blows his ult before Drake's coming up. He's not thinking about the objectives. He's just thinking about the short gains. He's very short-minded. Um, we start as Drake, knowing full well Lee Sin can't contest, they're not in position for it, we have perfect ward coverage. So what happens, Akali jumps the wall for pre pretty much no reason, right, there's no reason for anyone to jump over here. Um, we know for a fact if Lee Sin comes in, he gets pulled like this, bodied by four people. Um, if Lee Sin dies here, if Lee Sin dies here and takes Drake, we would probably just rush and go Baron. But we don't need to speed the game up that much now. We've got a third Drake. Um, it's just paying attention to that wing con guys of the Drakes. Um, and, and pushing ahead. I, they're pinging me like fuck here to go Baron. I'm saying no guys, there's a free tower mid. Open up the map. Uh, that stops people from being able to farm. It pushes in. You can go take enemy jungle like I'm doing now. We wouldn't be able to do that with mid tower. Diana wants a bit of it here. I, mm, I don't know if she can do it or not. I'm full armor right now guys. Uh, she's a little bit behind. She needs her Nash's tooth to hit her power spike, but she's not doing too bad. Uh, I do have a level on her here, so I'm confident to lane into her. I can either run away or fight her, depending on how I'm feeling. Our wave clear is massive. We just one-shot the wave and walk away. Easy like that, guys. 
Um, I see everyone mid, I was scared I'm getting two manned, but I decide for something ballsy. Let's go for the 1v1 on the Diana guys, right? So, Skirmisher, Saber, E, Stun, Ulted, Q, and I don't even have to do anything guys. I'm literally just right-clicking her and spamming Q here and she dies. Skirmisher, Saber is so powerful. I'm, I'm pretty much full armor here, Merc Threads is all I've got for MR. She's got Conqueror, I've got Phase Rush, and I still win that fight. I've got a utility rune and I still beat her in this 1v1. Diana's pretty pretty like lethal in a lot of champions 1v1, right? And she's not exactly running it down right now. She's got a good CS, decent items, body, not even a contest for for Skarna, right? So we're very powerful now, guys. We can snowball this game, get this game ended quicker. Um because we're getting to the point where we're at a gold lead now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, big guy. Um we're getting to the point where we're now at a gold lead. They've thrown their lead. We've snowballed the game with objectives, taken towers, and this is what we do now. We just look for picks. Um, we've got fantastic set of pick champs. Akali, Ash, Ari, you know, these champions, you get Akali assassinating and one bit of CC is touch of death for these people. So we set up a trap um, at the banning, and it looks like we're looking to just do a banning here and end the game out. We've got the lead. I'm pinging here. I, I type in chat, in fact. I say um, if they come up, we turn immediately, right? We've got the lead. Lee Sin's dead. We win a fight 100%. So Diana walks up here. And look look at what happens here. I just body block them from the squishy four champs on the back lane. I'm body blocking, body blocking. If she steps up, she's dead. E onto the Diana. Stunned for 1.2 seconds. Burned. Ulted. Now, guys, that would have been a perfect... That would have been a perfect ult for her there. She would have hit five champions. And potentially, she could have swung this match. She could have swung the match off this engage here. Uh, whether you think it's a bad engage or not, this is this is the game's over for them here. Um, if they if they lose this bad, the game is over. So once again, this assassin, this is exactly why we picked Skarner into Diana and Aurelia. We'd have done the exact same thing to this Aurelia. Should have got taken Rune back and shown who's boss by the big metal scorpion. So she walks up here, drop the E, we'll slow mo it down. Auto attacked. She can't do anything. She can't even ult here, guys. She's got no chance. Uh, champions like Kazadin, Echo as well, you know, they do something like that, they get no chance. Um, if they need to use their ultimate to escape here, you need to use their mobility to survive in fights. You hit them with the stinger. You hit them with the stinger, guys, and you take them down. Um, so that's exactly what you need to be doing in fights. It's not complicated on Skarner. Pick them into the right champions, and he will carry you through games. Trust me. He's in a very good position right now, and... Um, I would recommend to pick him up for a lot of people. Hopefully he's going to be in a good position next season as well. The items and rune changes don't cuck him too much. But guys, that that's going to be it for us now. We take um, we now take Baron. Uh, we go to push with it. And uh, shortly after, we take next Drake. We take next Drake and uh, look to end here. So that's pretty much it for the analysis here. Now, things to take away from this. When to pick Skarmer? We When do we pick him? And pick them into assassins, squishy melees, people who are easy to ult, right? You don't want to play Skarner like a lot of people do, where you run straight for the back line and try and ult someone, because that's often going to end up with you dying. Pick Skarner in these scenarios, guys, and he will pay dividends for your team. Um, if we had one more person for frontline in this game, it would have been doubly free. The early game would have been a lot easier. Um... But we don't, and we just look to close out the game here. I'm I'm looking for the uh, the extra tower here to pad my stats, of course. You know, want to pad the CS numbers, want to pad the the objective damage. You know, um. But like I say, guys, pick him into squishy melees, assassins, anything like that. He will he will be free for you. Play your early game slow and controlled. Only take kills and gank if it is uh, going to be free. Right? Don't waste your time ganking. Um, try to chase someone down if you don't think it's going to work and you will be absolutely fine guys. Pay attention to this video and Skarna will carry you to wherever you want to go. Guys, any questions, ask away. I've not been playing a lot of Skarna recently but when I do pick them, it's highly, highly impactful. You can't pick them every game. Any questions, message me about it. I'm looking to do a lot more content in the future. Um, I've got a new webcam coming up because as you can tell... Uh, one we've got to now, it's, it's a bit assed here. It's just in my laptop. But that's not going to stop me uh, making content because I love it. It's a lot of fun. And uh, hoping to do some more edited videos in future. 
once the webcam comes in, stuff that can be uh, a, lot, a bit more entertaining as opposed to informative. But I hope you took something away from this, guys. Um, like I say, any questions, just drop it down in the comments. Didn't play the game perfectly, but we still carried, baby. Let's go. Like, comment, and subscribe. That's what you're meant to see on YouTube, innit? Cheers for watching, guys. Thank you.